Hi, I'm Jack Black. This is my IMDB page. First on this page, how do you feel about the picture? I mean, it looks a little dopey. It doesn't look like the photo of a serious actor. It is still a good looking pic. It, 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 it looks pretty solid. <laughs> do you know what your first uh, IMDB credit is? Holy shit, I should be able to do this. Tell me what it is. The first credit is The Fall Guy. Oh, shit skis, of course, the fall guy. <laughs> Lee Majors. He was the six million dollar man. And that was my favorite show growing up. And it was his new TV show. And I remember when I went into audition, it wasn't just a casting director. It wasn't just the director. It was motherfucking Lee Majors. So yeah, I made the cut. That's I liked what he saw. Bob Roberts. So that movie, gets accepted at the Cannes Film Festival. I have such a small role, I'm not invited to go to the premiere at Cannes, but my father, weirdly, lives in Cannes at that time. So I fly over to visit my dad, and I sneak in and get it and get my way, we weasel my way into the premiere, and then we end up all going to this party on top of a mountaintop. Tim Robbins is there, Giancarlo Esposito, Robert Altman. And the four of us are smoking a J up on top of a mountain in Cannes, overlooking the gorgeous lights, twinkling lights of Cannes. And I thought, this is it. I kick ass in a major motion picture. Now the career is gonna take off, but then nothing happened and I couldn't get any work for like 10 years. Now there's probably some credits in there, but you'll see that it was all like small parts and bit, bits and chunks for, the, for a long time. Demolition Man. That was a gig. I was really stoked when I got it, but it turned out I was basically just a glorified extra. What would happen is I would go to set every morning at 6 a.m., wait all day in the trailer, and then about 9 p.m., they would say, all right, you're done for the day, and I didn't do anything. And it went like that for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then one day, this is like day fucking 45, okay? I wake up late. I partied too hard the night before. I wake up late. I'm like, fuck, oh, I'm late. And I put on my pants, I get everything together. And I'm driving, and I'm like, it doesn't matter, fuck, it doesn't matter. And I call my agent, and I say, uh, I'm late, uh, but it doesn't matter because they, they never use me anyway. And my agent's like, oh, it doesn't matter, does it? I just got a call from Joel Silver, and he said that this Jack Black kid better be dead. They needed you today, Jack. Today was your day on camera. And I was like, fuck! And I got there, but apparently I missed the chance to say like, yo, Dennis, we're really gonna give him one, right? You know, so who the fuck cares? I missed a stupid, shitty line. Touched by an angel. We've got a clip of this one. Oh, really? Yeah, we're gonna put oh, this great. one up. Oh, great. You gonna make sure you get home okay and everything? Hey, hold on. <laughs> Wouldn't waste any energy trying to figure out what just happened. <laughs> It's weird, I have a weird sensation where I'm, I'm horribly embarrassed, but also it's nice to see me looking so young and handsome. Oh my God. Mr. Show. This is a real turning point. David Cross and Bob Odenkirk, who created Mr. Show, discovered Tenacious D in a little club and gave us little bit parts in, in Mr. Show. And that was an exciting time and we were, we were lucky to be part of that in, in a small way. Do you have any um, sketches you remember from? Don't show? stick your dick in these holes. Don't stick your dick in these holes. Don't stick your dick in these holes. So they've got some trivia on your IMDb page, and we'd love for you to fact check these. Had his gallbladder removed. Ding, 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 ding. It's true. And I have to say, fuck gallbladders. They don't do anything. Uh, good riddance. I think everyone should have them removed. Friends with Steve Harvey. You know what? I've done the Steve Harvey show. And I would say it was very friendly. However, we have never once gotten together for like a drink or a meal or even said hi to each other off set of his show the one time I was on it. So I'm gonna say, eh. Yeah, I'd like to be friends with him. Audition for the role of Cubby Barnes in Ransom. I don't know if that's an eh or a ding, ding, ding. So I'm gonna go ding, 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 because I don't know. I don't have any recollection, but that doesn't mean it's not true because a lot of drugs have filtered through these these brain synapses, and I don't trust it. The jackal. Me and my and Bruce Willis. One day we went we went to lunch. We had a lunch break. I was like, "What's going on? What's up, what's up with this lunch break? This lunch break's taking a long time. It's three hour lunch break. Are we gonna shoot some more of the scene?" And they're like, <sighs> "Bruce uh, went to lunch in Paris. He's gonna be back soon." Apparently, he jumped in a plane. He really had a taste for something. And then he came back and fucking murdered me. 
Johnny Skidmarks? I told him to change the name of the title. <laughs> Swear to God. I told the director, I was like, this is great, but it's not gonna be, this is like a working title, right? We're gonna change the name. It's like, no, I love it, Johnny Skidmark. It's, it's got a cool sound. I was like, yeah, but it means shit stain. No, that's not what it means. He didn't believe me. What did he think it was? I think he just thought it was like a cool thing, like <laughs> you're leaving a place fast. You leave skid marks. I was like, dude, all right. And then sure enough, Zero people went to see it because they thought it was about a uh, shit stain. High fidelity. I was stoked, but I was also nervous because I could feel like I already have like my rock and roll like project. It's Tenacious D. I felt like it was maybe stepping on some of the same and I didn't really want to do it. I wanted to keep those worlds separate. I was like, okay, I will. I want to come and audition though. I want to show you how I would do it. And then I came in and I gave the worst, weirdest, most nervous audition ever. And then I was like, I fucked up the audition, but now I really do want the part. It's a miracle that I got that part in the end because I, I did everything I could to sabotage it and fuck up. And then we did it, and it was fucking the thing. That, that's the thing that got that started my, my career. School of Rock. This is the best film of my career. This is the where all the planets aligned. We had the first reading of it before we even started shooting, where all the kids were cast, and we were in New York, and we sat down at the table read, and we read it out loud, and I was like, this fucking rules. So at this point, you've really established yourself, and IMDb actually lists your trademarks. Expressive eyes, eyebrows. This is from School of Rock. That's my. That's where I really revealed my eyebrow gymnastics. Stocky frame. I don't even think I would look good skinny, but I do always feel like I'm just 15 pounds away from being my, my sexiest self. Like a lean, mean 216. Starts speaking in a slow, quiet tempo and begins to sing in a faster, louder cadence. What does that mean? That's the description of me? I start speaking in a slow, quiet tempo and begins to sing faster in a louder cadence! That's not me. I don't know what that is. Anchorman. So Anchorman was a rad opportunity to party with one of my heroes, Will Ferrell and Adam McKay. So I just jumped at that little cameo where I kicked the dogie off the side of the bridge. A Nacho Libre. Nacho Libs. That was rad. Like if you look at that movie, it's like beautiful. It's funny, but it's also like gorgeous landscapes and incredible experience. Love that Jared Hess. Tenacious D, pick a destiny. Only motion picture I've ever written. It's not for me to say, but I think it has received a, a cult status in the stoner film world. Tropic Thunder. Ben Stiller offers me this role of a lifetime with these people. You know, you got Robert Downey Jr., who at the time you didn't know how he was gonna be. And he's also uh, talking about, he did another little movie, uh, Iron Man, it's gonna be coming out, you know, pretty soon. So that was an incredible thing to witness, the dude going rocket over thrusters. <laughs> Gulliver's Travels. We didn't get the best reviews. <sighs> and you're saying what went wrong? I'm saying nothing went wrong. I think it's pretty damn good. Next. The Big Year. A uh, bird watching film. Nobody went and saw the film, but I think there are some good chunks in there, especially if you're a bird watcher. Then it's a must. Jumanji. Uh, I knew it was gonna be good because I read the script and Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart were already attached. And I was like, these characters are jumping off the page. And my role, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play the most popular girl in high school. For some reason, I know how to play that. And then it was such a hit. It was way bigger than I even anticipated. And now, um, I think we're gonna make part two. I think you have to. I think you like have to. They kill you if you try to walk away and they clone you. Don't worry, he won't get far on foot. I wrote a letter to Gus Van Zandt. I just had seen so many of his movies and they were just striking a chord with me. And I wrote him a letter and then he never wrote me back. I was like, ah. That was dumb, I shouldn't be writing letters. And then he thinks I'm just trying to get into his next film. And I felt a little gross, but then 10 years later, I get the call. Gus Van Zandt wants you to be in his next movie. I was like, fuck yeah, the letter! It was the letter! So now I just write letters. The house uh, with a clock in its walls? Yeah, I got a new movie called The House with a Clock in Its Walls. And the thing you gotta remember, it's The House because you can easily get off to the wrong foot by saying a house with a clock in the walls. And it's like, no, it's the little words are so important in the title. The house with a clock in its walls. And I feel it's, it's helpful to say it with, with uh, 
incredible amount of intensity. It helps me to remember the title. How does it feel going through all that? <sighs> Feels like a fucking house with a clock <laughs> in its walls. Hey, I'm Jack Black. That was my IMDb page. I'm gonna take a power nap. <laughs>